You could be wiser as an educated advisor. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, the Tax Bracket Racket, part three of our series on cash value life insurance and tax-free income, all here on Let's Get Down to Business. I have an old adage, it's not about how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. And believe you me, when you're managing retirement, we need to manage the things we talked about in the last segment, our taxation issues for sure. Taxes is the largest expense in retirement, bigger than long-term care. When you look at all the taxes you pay in state and federal, and you accumulate that from the day that you retire to the day that you die, you'll be so shocked at what you've been paying in taxes. So keep in mind, this is why it's not important how much I make, it's really important on how much I get to keep. Now, I'm looking at defined benefit plans or to define contribution plans. And when I'm thinking about an employee and I'm making a judgment call, I'm looking at how high in the tax bracket is my client. If my client's in the blended effective tax bracket of probably around 30 or above, it's really tough to say no to anything that's ERISA, 401k, SEP IRA, regular IRA, because the higher up in the tax bracket, I could really use those tax savings. And the second thing is, is I might even have an employer that's matching. I'm not gonna leave my 401k if I'm getting a match. So I'm, I'm at least gonna fund to the match of the employer. But if I didn't have either one of those, I'd highly question why I'm in a defined contribution plan to begin with. So my qualification always is, do I have a high tax bracket, 30% blended effective tax bracket or greater? Or do I have a contribution from my employer and that contribution, he's matching it dollar for dollar? I have to do that, or I might even have both. But if I don't have either one, then I'm going to start suggesting that you look at other ideas. Now, the vast majority of 401k participants are not in a high effective tax bracket. That knocks out about 80% of everybody that's participating in a defined contribution plan. And the vast majority are not receiving employer match. Now, some of the higher quality carrier companies can afford it and they're doing it. So I certainly don't want to uh, be negative on that. I love match, but most people are not doing it, especially entrepreneurs, self-employed. Nobody's getting a match on those monies. So for those two groups, I really look at, should I be in an ERISA plan like a 401k or an IRA? Now, is the tax deduction worth it? So I asked this person, what was he contributing and he was a very middle class guy, he's making about 60,000 a year. He said he could afford to contribute based on his total expenses and budget. He could contribute and has been contributing about $1,000. His blended tax bracket rate was right at 20% all in. So he was saving about $200 every year. Now, if he started saving $200 a year, and I'm gonna say because he's young, he might have to work till age 70. So he may have 40 years of savings, $200 a year times 10 would be 2,000 times 40 to get his 40. He has $8,000 that he had in tax savings. Now, if he were to save that tax savings, like when I came into the business in the old days, we took whatever tax savings and we put it into a flexible annuity account. But nobody does that today. So I'm looking for people that say, look, is the tax bracket worth it? Is this tax savings worth it? And you're going to have to do the equation, just like I did, to say, is it worth it? So I look at these tax brackets. If you're an individual, you need to know this so that you can quantify, hey, should I be in ERISA products or should I not be in an ERISA product? And right up front, this is why we call it the tax bracket racket. It's not only a marginal bracket, but as you see, as we move up income, we start to pay higher. That's individual. And individuals right now in our bracket pay, pay more money than marrieds. Now, when I look at head of households, there's a little bit of adjustment, but not much. And so you're looking at different um, uh, titles. You're titled by the IRS, and when you're titled by the IRS, individual or head of household, you have a whole new chart of your own. And you're gonna look at, remember, you'll still be able to use your exemptions, you'll still be able to use your deductions, and any tax credits to finally get to these real numbers. And keep in mind, if you're married filing jointly, and most people like myself, I'm married, filing jointly with my wife, those numbers, there's a little bit of tax savings. I always tell people, hey, I know this couple that's getting married in February of 2018, I always encourage them, hey, if you wanna get the tax deduction, you can go down to the Justice of the Peace on December 31, so you can get your deduction, and then you can still keep your marriage date of February, whatever. You just wanna look at what am I categorized? And so 
every time they'll get married filing separately. There's people that actually the, the math works better if they file separately. And that's why you always want to use a professional tax consultant, somebody that really knows their stuff, CPA, enrolled agents of the IRS, or an attorney, a tax attorney, because they're going to tell you which one is going to benefit you the most. So the first thing in the tax bracket racket, what tax bracket am I in? And that's, I'm, remember, I'm taking into account my deductions, my exemptions, and any tax credits that I might have forwarded to me. Now, is ERISA regulations worth it? Think about it. I, have, I might need my money before 59 and a half. Maybe I have an emergency. Maybe that I have to do other things. I can borrow from most 401ks. People are pretty flexible about that now. But remember, I can't really take constructive receipt of that money until I'm 59 and a half. And if I do take constructive receipt, I am not only have to pay ordinary income tax, I have a 10% penalty. So I have to look at the math here. What bracket am I in if I do this? And I'm going to have a 10% surcharge slapped on top of it. Remember, I also have penalties at age 70 and a half. I'm still stunned every time we talk to seniors or we do a senior seminar, most seniors do not know that they have required minimum distributions they must take at 70 and a half. That's regulatory, it's mandatory, and they have to take that tax, they have to take constructive receipt then, and it's taxed. If you do not take constructive receipt of that money, you will be taxed at whatever the difference is that you should have paid at 50% taxes. It's terrible. So think about that. You really need to manage that. And if you're one of those people that made this mistake and you're still within the year that you did it, it's possible that you could be repaired. We have tax professionals that can give you some advice depending upon if it's suitable and if you qualify. And then the last thing is, is you could take money early at 55 under 72Q or 72R. I don't know if it's really worth it, because now they're gonna amortize that from age 55, your payments on your retirement, all the way out, and that number is gonna be really small. So unless it's just the only way you can play, that's not really a good tactical issue. But I wanted to throw it in to be fair to ERISA. Qualified plans are includable in the provisional income test for Social Security. I said that in another segment. Again, I'm surprised that seniors don't understand and get this. And remember that everything we talked about in the first, seg first segment, this is all going to, or second segment, I'm sorry, all is going to flow over to the Social Security Provisional Income Test. And this page is worth its weight in gold. You need to be able to look at this page, look at your math, and plan accordingly. Remember, preemptive planning can save you so much money in taxes alone during retirement. And I want you to start thinking, page one at bottom of the page, line 31, that's adjusted gross. But the games are not played there any longer. And when we were brought up, that was, the num that was the number we looked for. But now I'm looking at modified adjusted gross on the second page. That tells me any phase out, maybe I don't get to use all my exemptions. Maybe some of my deductions aren't warranted at because of my income. I have to look at all those things. But right now, it's not so much AGI, adjusted gross income, anymore. It's modified adjusted gross income. Again, a tax consultant, a professional can help you on this to really assess your AGI versus your MAI. MA GI. And then qualified plans. Remember, keep in mind, people don't know this. Yes, you get tax savings on your federal taxes, but it doesn't do anything with your FICA feud So your Social Security or your unemployment, your Medicare, all those taxes there, they're not included in that. The only plan that I know, ERISA, is a defined contribution plan is a 412I plan that allows not only the deduction from the federal side of that equation, but also from FICA feud suda. And then remember, most participants don't invest their tax savings from, from their tax savings from their qualified plans. They spend it, they're consumers. Remember, it's not how much money you make in retirement, it's how much money you get to keep. If you look through your bracket and figure out what your bracket is, you're able to go ahead and try to game the system legally and use all your deductions, your exemptions, and your tax credits to your benefit and to arrange when you take constructive receipt of your retirement monies, whether from qualified plans, non-qualified monies, from loans from your home equity position, or collateralized policy loans from life insurance. All these matter and could really help you in retirement. And don't forget to watch our next segment, All Financial Products Have Expenses, part four of our series on cash value, life insurance, and tax-free income. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or compliance officer. And don't forget, you can subscribe to my consumer show, Steve Savant's Money, The Name of the Game, daily content that you can post on your website, social media accounts, and database distribution. I'm Steve Savant. Thanks for watching.